Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Nuggets News. Today we've got a very special guest from the Ethereum name service, and that's the founder, Nick Johnson. So welcome to the channel, man. Hi, pleasure to be here. Now, I'll bring this up for viewers at home. Ethereum name service is trying to do um, human readable names rather than these long, complicated addresses that we currently see. So what's the history behind this project, man? Uh, so I joined Ethereum uh, a little over two years ago, and at the time there wasn't really any sort of uh, useful service for naming accounts and contracts and, and even content and swarm and so forth. And uh, I mean, I, I was kind of surprised because uh, one of the big advantages of a smart contract based system like Ethereum is that you can uh, have human reading, human meaningful names. Uh, so I started working on ENS at about the same time and, and rolled it out, you know, not long, maybe six months afterwards. Um, and its basic goal is that users shouldn't have to see or enter addresses anywhere. They're, they're long, they're not human meaningful, they're easy to get wrong, uh, and we should just be able to use human readable names everywhere. So for those people at home that aren't familiar with how domain names work, .coms or .ios, do you want to explain a bit of the history behind that and how, how you got to .f? Sure. So um, DNS started way back in the late seventies, early eighties, because it was necessary to name, you know, all the computers on the network. And the initial system of like manually maintaining a list of host names and distributing a copy of that every day or every week to people wasn't scaling. So DNS was invented to sort of distribute that. And it's actually one of the first decentralized systems, or at least distributed systems, because um, it has a root servers, and their job is to to resolve the top level domains like com, eth, net, and so on. And then each of those delegates to another layer of servers for each of those top level domains, and so on and so forth. And um, basically, in in the past, there were only a few top level domains. Uh, a few years ago, I can released a whole lot more, and it's formed what we sort of think of as the uh, global namespace you know for most purposes when people look at dotted names they think of the, the dns namespace so when we launched ens we wanted to sort of co sort of cooperate with that as much as possible but obviously as a new effort we weren't going to get you know ICANN or iana or whoever to just hand us a top level domain so we came up with dot eth because it was unused and it fitted the application and just sort of unilaterally started using it um, but we're trying to behave as nicely as possible and not pollute the namespace because we do want to be able to integrate with the sort of legacy technologies. Yeah, I think it's crazy that people forget that there weren't search engines, you know, only a few decades ago. You had to go to the exact address and know what website you were looking for and so on. Yes. Um, the next process I wanted to talk about was that registration. There's At the moment, there's that bid or auction system where I can get nuggetsnews.eth, for example, um, and that's going to change, I think, in the middle of next year, you were saying. So what's that process look like now? What's it going to look like in the future? Yeah, so right now it's a, an auction process, like you say. It uses something called a Vickery auction, and the way it works is uh, you express your interest in a name by starting an auction on it, and then you place a secret bid, and the bid doesn't reveal which name you're bidding on um, or even much information about how much you're bidding. Um, and then anyone else during the first three days can place their own bids. And after that, everyone has a two-day period where they reveal their bids, and the person who reveals the highest bid wins the name. Uh, and in the case that no one else bids, uh, you get it for a default of 0 0.01 Ether. Um, and the idea here is that it's, it's fair because nobody can sort of base their bids on your bids and try and snipe you and so forth. Um, and it operates on what's called a second price auction, which means that you don't pay the amount you bid, you pay the amount of the second highest bidder. And the reasoning behind that is it means that you can bid as much as you think it's worth, safe in the knowledge that you'll only pay as much as it costs to outbid the next person. Um, and this worked pretty well for the launch because there were a lot of names that lots of people wanted to snap up, but less so on an ongoing basis because now that the sort of land rush is over, most, the vast majority of names get sold with just a single bid. Uh, and that means a whole five-day process with like at least three transactions uh, just to acquire a name that you're probably the only person who, want, you know, who wants it. Um, so what we're going to transition to is a sort of an instant buy system similar to what regular DNS names use. So you'll be able to pay rent. It'll be a fixed cost a year, sort of on par with 10, 10 US dollars a year. Uh, you can pay as far in advance as you want, and you just send a simple transaction to acquire the name. Uh, probably it'll be two transactions, but that's just because we want to prevent front running and so forth. It's fantastic. Nice and simple going forward. Um, 
what's the format? I think we've seen other projects say, you know, it has to be 12 characters. Is this as many or as few as you want? So uh, ENS at the moment only lets you register names that are seven characters or longer. Okay. Um, and because they're maintained in a contract, there's no, like, you know, they're not a hash of anything. They're entirely human readable names. There's no intrinsic restriction. Um, before we release the, the new instant buy registrar, we'll be sort of auctioning off one last time names that are shorter than six characters, probably minimum of three. Um, and that will be a very straightforward sort of, you know, bid to win auction. Um, and then we'll transition to this ongoing system with, you know, minimum of three letter names, I think. So in the, the distant future, when we're running on Web 3.0, um, for people at home, what are some real world examples that, that you really like for not only individuals, addresses and websites, but I'm thinking I can send Ethereum to nuggets.news.phone.eth and mm -hmm. name each of my individual devices and all that sort of thing. Absolutely, yeah. And the one of the nice things about the expandability of ENS uh, with the ability to write custom resolvers and so on is that you can do neat things like uh, have the address that gets resolved depend on who's doing the resolving, for instance. So you could give me a, a send to address and it can de deposit in a separate wallet depending on who's sending. So you can isolate deposits, uh, which would be useful for things like exchanges. Uh, we're looking at adding wildcard support, which would also make it possible to send to you know, account number dot exchange dot eth or something like that. Um, and beyond just resolving, uh, you know, addresses and so forth, uh, you can interact with contracts. And right now you can use the ABI support, which means that instead of having to copy and paste an ABI and an address, you can just type in a name and it will fetch everything it needs to interact with the contract from that. Uh, and then, of course, it can be used for resolving distributed content like IPFS and swarm addresses as well. So is there that layer of um, privacy or obfuscation if somebody knows that they've sent money to nuggetsnews.eth and then they is there going to be like a web search where they can look at that address as we currently can on Etherscan to see how much money is in that address? Or Yeah, so all the same things that are possible with, with regular addresses are possible with ENS. And privacy is, is really an issue that the underlying chain has if it doesn't have private transactions. You know, if you uh, name your account, it makes it easier to tell it to people but presumably you were going to tell those people what your account address was anyway so that they could pay you. So it doesn't really worsen the, uh, the privacy aspects, but it doesn't provide a solution either. That's going to have to rely on base layer uh, primitives like ZK Snarks. I was going to say, we're already seeing sort of early implementations of that. And do you believe that Ethereum will be private within 12 to 24 months? Uh, I'm not sure. I think we'll certainly have support for private transactions, but I think much like Zcash, the overhead is high enough that people will always want the lower overhead option of just a simple send because they don't want to spend the amount of gas that would be required for a private transaction every time. Yeah, for people at home, it is more expensive to do something privately because of the computation or more gas required. Is that, That's the right way to describe it, isn't it? That's right, yeah. Cool. So anything else that you're excited about at the moment in, in general? I know you got back from DevCon 4, Nick, and Vitalik's talking about, um, you know, Serenity, we're not allowed to call it 2.0 anymore and all the scalings on the horizon. What stage do you sort of see when, I know a lot of people come for the trading and then you know, now it's down 90%. A lot of people stay. If they're watching this video, they're probably interested in the technology. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I guess I'm, I'm really excited about some of the roadmap stuff. Um, it's nice to see some proof of concepts for sharding and, and just, you know, proof of stake coming out. Um, although... You know, the engineer in me worries that there's still lots of difficult problems to solve. Um, there's definite progress in that direction, and, and I'm looking forward to seeing that evolve. Uh, I'm pretty excited about eWASM because I'm actually, I'm a low-level engineer at heart, and I like the uh, both the things that it will grant us in terms of efficiency and capabilities, and I also think it's a very elegant implementation, the way it's been put together. Um, the EVM is very much was designed from a sort of a theoretical purity point of view. It is a computer science virtual machine. You know, the sort of eWASM is much better suited to that. And it's it's really nice that we're, you know, looking at moving on to that and, and being able to improve the throughput and the, the performance and so forth. So for those people at home, it just cut out a little bit there, Nick. What is eWASM in a nutshell? So uh, WASM is WebAssembly, and it was originally created as a way for uh, JavaScript apps, or sorry, for browser-based apps to run uh, native code or, or transpiled code more efficiently, and generally to provide a, a runtime that's sort of uh, more restrictive than, than just JavaScript, but uh, more performant. 
Uh, eWASM is Ethereum WASM, so it's the WASM runtime with some stuff like floating point cut out because we don't want that on a, a, a smart contract platform, uh, and then optimized for Ethereum. And the idea is that we can replace the existing EVM runtime with the eWASM runtime. Uh, and because uh, JITs and other tools are available for eWASM, that means that the code can be compiled down to native code on each machine, and it can run way faster than the interpreted EVM code can. Awesome. That's pretty technical stuff there, guys, but I'm going to sort of try and break all this scaling stuff down um, as we move forward as well. So any final thoughts? I've really enjoyed this talk today, Nick. Thanks for uh, joining us. Yeah, it was my pleasure. Uh, I guess uh, for any of your listeners who are interested in getting their own ENS domain, take a look at ens.domains. And if you want to uh, auction a sort of a top-level one, uh, for now, I suggest going and looking at ethsimple.com. Awesome. I will put all the links in the description below as well, guys. And I might even do a tutorial on how to uh, bid and so on. So thanks for joining us today, Nick. My pleasure.